Here's a review of our section on optimization in Algebra 2. And these were the longest problems, so you really want to make sure when you're getting ready to take a test that you can do a problem like this, because it tends to be worth 8 to 10 points just on, on one question. What you want to do is you want to read the problem, and you have to decide two things. You have to decide what your objective function is going to represent, and you have to decide what your constraints will be. Your objective function is what you are trying to optimize. So what are you trying to get to be a maximum, or what are you trying to get to be a minimum? So as you read through this question, you'll notice the word maximize. So you just want to read that phrase and see what are you trying to maximize. You're trying to maximize your profit. So your objective function is going to stand for profit. Now the next thing you need to figure out is what are your variables going to represent. So when you read through your problems, you realize you have two things that are different that are happening. You are stenciling small boxes, and you are stenciling large boxes. So you can use A and B, X and Y. I'm going to use S for small, and I'm going to use L for large. Giving the variables have, to have a meaning really makes the problem easier. So if I look at profit and I read the, the sentences back again, I realize that I get $10 profit for every small box. So it's going to be 10S, $10, $10 for every small. And then I'm getting $20 for every large box. So that is your objective function. Once you write it, you're not going to use it again until the very end of the problem. But just writing that correctly gets you a point, even if you have nothing else correct. Now I need to figure out what my constraints are. So these are the things that limit us. We are limited usually by time, by money, by usually things that, you know, you only have so much hours in a day, you only have so much money to spend. So if you continue reading, what you'll see is that you're limited by the hours it takes to stencil these boxes. It takes two hours to stencil a small box. It takes three hours to stencil a large box. And I only have 30 hours available, no more than 30 hours. That means this has to be less than or equal to 30. So there is one constraint. Again, just writing it gives you a point. We have one more constraint, and it's the amount of boxes that I need to sell, and it comes from this phrase right here. I want to sell at least 12 boxes. So what that means, if I take my small and my large and add them together, they have to be greater than or equal to 12. So I have my, con my objective function, and I have my two constraints. Now I have to go about graphing them. My job is to graph the two constraints to shade and come up with the feasible region. When you look at these problems, they will always be in standard form when you're dealing with optimization. And the best way to do standard form is to do the cover-up method and identify your intercepts, your x and y intercepts. In this case, we're going to call them s and l. So when I look at the top equation, if I cover up the L, I get that 2S equals 30. So that means when I divide by 2, my S intercept is 15. I'm going to do the same thing to find the L intercept. I know that 3L equals 30, so L equals 10. So I have an X intercept and a Y intercept. In this case, I'm calling it S for small and L for large. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the bottom constraint. If I cover up the L, I get S equals 12. If I cover up the S, I get L equals 12. So my intercepts are actually the exact same number for this one. Doing this first helps you set up your scale. So now I look at my picture, and I will always give you a coordinate plane to work with. I'm going to call, instead of x, I'm going to call this s, and I'm going to call this l. So I have my s axis and my l axis, and you can stick with x's and y's if you prefer. And I need to go out all the way to 15. And I have plenty of spaces here just to go by ones. You can write them in. Sometimes I'll write them in for you. Sometimes you will have to adjust them, but in this case, it works out perfectly. You don't have to write every single number either. And then going on your L axis, you have to go up to 12. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go just whole numbers. I don't have to go by hundreds or tens because I'm working with very small numbers. And then I'm going to plot. And it really helps if you work with either two different colors or a pencil and a pen because I want to plot and I want to figure out where the shading is. So I'm going to start with the first one. The first one has an S intercept of 15. So I'm going to put a dot at 15 and an L intercept at 10. I'm going to connect the dots. And here's where you really want to use the side of your folder when you're taking your test, the side of your agenda. I am probably not going to be as accurate because I don't have the accuracy when you're working with this pen on my board. So I'm going to have to kind of rely more on maybe what you're doing at home when you're sitting there and writing down, doing a, trying to make a straight line. You can tell mine doesn't even look perfectly straight. I want to do the other one, and I'm going to do the other one in a different color. I'll go red with this one. I'm going 12 and 12, so 12 on the S and 12 on the Y. Try to draw this as straight as I can. That one looks a little bit better. 
the reason that it's so important is I am going to have to figure out where they meet. And I know I, I did do this in paper and pencil, and so I have a little more accurate idea of where they're supposed to meet. Now I need to figure out where my shading goes, and that's where it's going to help to use 0, 0 as your test point. If I look at the line segment that I drew in purple, that was this top one. So it was, this one was in purple. If I put 0 in, 0 is less than or equal to 30. So that is a true statement. So I want to shade underneath the purple. So I'm just going to kind of real light put that in there. And then with the red one, if I put 0, 0 in, I actually get a statement that is not true. 0 is not greater than or equal to 12. So I want to shade away from 0, 0 or above that. So you have to look at your picture and figure out what is in common. What is the feasible region? I'm going to be beneath the purple and above the red. And beneath the purple, above the red, is going to be this sliver right here. I'm going to make it really dark. Kind of, it's, It is a triangle. That feasible region, we call it a bounded feasible region because it is completely enclosed and it looks like a little triangle, very skinny triangle. I need to know all the vertices of that region. Here's the one that it maybe is the most difficult for my picture. If you do it with a nice straight edge, it works out a lot nicer. It is the point six six. If you're not sure what it is and you can't tell from your picture, you can either try to take a guess and then plug it into your inequalities and make sure it makes both of them not only true but equal to what it's supposed to, what the other side is. Or you could actually solve the system using the techniques that we did earlier in the chapter by doing either a substitution or elimination. So you have a lot of techniques that you could use. This vertex is the vertex 15, 0. And this vertex is the vertex 12, 0. If you remember in class, I got in the habit of numbering them. 1, 2, and 3. We want to figure out which of these possibilities gives me the biggest profit. So I'm going to call it P1 using the first vertex, P2 using the second, P3 using the third. So if I take 6 and 6, I'm putting these points back into this objective function. I'm putting 6 in for S. I'm putting 6 in for L. I get 6 times 10 is 60 plus 6 times 20 is 120, and you're doing this in your calculator, you do not have to do this in your head, you end up getting $180 profit. Then I do for the same thing for the second one. I take this point, 15, 0, and I put it into your objective function. I end up getting $150. And then I look at P3. P3 is the point 12, 0. When I put 12, 0 in, I get $120. Now, if you remember, the problem wanted the maximum profit. And you want to make sure your answer has a meaning. So you want to write down not only which one's the biggest, but how did you get that. So here, obviously, is the biggest profit. So your final answer should be written something like this. I want to do six small boxes, because that was your first number right here. I want to do six large boxes. And by doing so, I'm going to make a profit of $180. So interpret your answer. Tell me what that point six six means, and tell me what the actual profit is that you're getting that is your maximum value. And that is the way you do a uh, problem from section 3.4.